Assassin 180. The scorpion looking quadcopter has arrived. Introducing the Ishing Assassin 180 and the VR 007 glasses. My plan is to put this camera in a black bag alongside the Fat Shop Dominator V2 and the Wakira Goggle 3. As you can see, it's a windy day. I'm out to complete a flight test, but not so much as I don't want to damage the LiPo battery. Long story short, which I will point out later, the charging station is not very accurate, so I came out with an uncharged battery. It is not the best practice to do a review in a few flights, so I would say this episode is just a first impression and overview. I will reserve my judgement for later and update the blog. Keep in mind the VR007 is just a screen recording from my Sony camera. Unfortunately my camera was not set high enough to capture the bottom of the screen, but yes, the OSD information does appear below the screen. So on the top right corner is the VR007, on the left is the Walkera Goggle 3, and at the bottom right is the Fat Shot Dominator V2. Strangely, the only sound I receive is from the Wakira Gaga 3. Hello, this is Leo from Drone Mission. I'm not expecting a bag. But the Ishin 180 and Gold came in a nice black bag. The out of packaging is impressive, but let's have a speedy look at the unboxing and cut to the chase. Let's get to what is important, the 180 racing quadcopter flew really well as shown earlier. It handed a run cam, HD camera, 43 grams with ease. I've not found any issues, no bad flight characteristics. On an Ace 32 flight controller, it was easy to maneuver and I give it a thumbs up. If you have flown quadcopters manually, this is easy. For beginners, please note this is not a drone. It is not going to auto land or fly back. Unboxing, I noticed strangely the GPS is glued on the and actually fell off. Taking a look at the schematics, it seems to be intended to be on the front. However, since I may be placing a secondary camera just above that spot, I decided to relocate it face up, keeping the same location it came with. I think it fits well there. You can see on my FPV video, the GPS does not serve much. It is not intended for auto return home, but just only to assist with the directions. The landing skid is made of plastic, so it bounces off concrete. I to land on grass only, unless you add some padding. The LED lights are very bright, you have the headlights and the tail lights. Here's your tank. I can see it on a sunny day, so that really helps for a small quadcopter. Ok, 
comes with a tunable low lux 520 TV lines camera, capable of night flying with some street lights. The only setback on this ready to fly package will power lies on the battery design. The general concern is, not only is the battery proprietary, you are not able to tell if all the cells are fully charged. The adapter indicator is not accurate at all. The lessons learned when the adapter LED lights turn solid green. I never get a fully charged battery. The only way to tell if the main battery is fully charged is to either press the smart battery button or to look at your on-screen display voltage status. However, ever on the plus side, when the battery is low, not only does it show on your OSD as a warning, it does show on your transmitter and the alarm eventually begins to sound. The 180 quickly descends and will not power up again to protect the battery. Now let's take a look at the VR007 goggles. It is comfortable and light, and if you're planning on building one yourself for $60 plus, this might be worth the consideration to just buy it ready. I like the two USB smart batteries provided, I believe they work with other goggles, so if they are priced right, this might become really popular. I have not tested the 40 channels, but if it is accurate, this will include the alpha, beta and race channels. Without further delays, I'm sure you want to see the selfie shot of the 180 again. Until the next time, thanks for following DroneMission.com. This is Leo, signing out.